Watch, 90.3 WHPC, and on the iHeartRadio app. I gotta go get ready for my show. Later. I guess I win by default. Winning! All right, let's get started. Winner of the best... Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. When it comes to the success of your business, don't just roll the dice. Let's find out why from our guest, Alan Young. Alan, thanks for being with us. Nice to be here with you, Bill. Now, Alan, you've written a book called The Four Pillars of Business Success. And you begin by saying, envision yourself designing or redesigning a company. Um, when we have our own company, aren't we maybe too close to it? You know, we're, we're so involved in it every day, every aspect. Can we really do a good job of that? Or do we need an outside person to come in and say, uh, oh, you have to treat the employees better or you're not servicing this need of the customer, etc.? What's your opinion on that? I have been on both sides of the fence. As an entrepreneur, uh, making sure that my company is well prepared to be successful. I have also uh, served as a consultant to quite a number of small business entrepreneur people who are thinking about starting their own business. I would say, yes, if you feel like you need help, you're too close to it, it's okay to um, hire a consultant, but be very careful. Uh, because a lot of them are much more interested in generating beautiful hours <laughs> than actually being able to help you. So I would suggest that if you can find an outside help, an outside consultant, go ahead, do it. Make sure that you look at the whole thing very objectively. But my preferred option is if you were to be a successful entrepreneur, a businessman, it is best that you master uh, whatever business you want to be in or already in or how to be the best and the most successful businessman. And the way to do it, you have to learn. You've got to be prepared to know everything that's possible. Read about you know, uh, as much as you can, as many books as you can, Listen to shows like this one because it is much better for you to have an open mind to learn from many different people because there isn't any two situations that's exactly alike. So the more you are exposed to more people, the better it is. Now, why is it that designing your company is important? Because people don't think about it that way. If you want to have a house being built, you would either design it, uh, be able to convey your idea of what your ideal home is, but most people would just get into the excitement of, I'm going to be my own boss and start my own company, without thinking that you really have to think through it. What would it take to be successful in business? This is why you need to come up with a vision and be very, very clear-minded about it as to what is it that you really want to accomplish. Now, and Alan, then, you, you yeah. mentioned to us, I'm sorry, but you mentioned to us that uh, entrepreneurs fail to give enough attention to the finer details. What are some of those finer details that the entrepreneurs tend to skip over? The final details may not be that obvious. For example, you do not want to get involved in the business that is not that does not complement your strength. It could be something that you you thought other people are successful, and you can come in as a me too and compete um, in that basis. The second thing that's extremely important is you have to make sure that it is something that you are really passionate about, that you're truly passionate about, because no matter how much you wish that you will hit it, hit an overnight success, it will take you much longer, cost more, there'll be more issues and so on. If you're not passionate about it, then you could 
find it very challenging and may give up way too soon and not be able to give it your best shot at that. The other final details, believe it or not, is you have to make sure that your family, those who are close to you, are supportive of your idea because you need to come home after a long day and make sure that they understand that you need encouragement, not someone who would be critical of you. Uh, and there would be other final details. That is, you, you have to make sure that what is it that you're good at? What is it that you're not good at? And be able to either find the right partner or find other people who can mentor you. So the list could go on and we will come back and, and cover it a little bit more later. And I, I guess that's what you mean, because I noticed later in your book, you say um, what you're doing in your book, The Four Pillars of Business Success, is to improve our odds. And that makes it better than gambling, which, of course, we don't want to make a business uh, a gamble because then it's potluck and we can lose a lot of money and our investors can lose money. And, of course, there's employees to count on and equipment and everything else. So if we follow your advice, uh, we're literally putting the odds, odds in our favor. Is that it? That is absolutely correct. If you know the final details and you know what are the key components that you must focus on and be able to make sure that everyone who is involved in your organization would understand that, then what it is is you know that your main component or the four key pillars are being covered. And now you can work on the final details because in business, it's those of us who have found out after being in um, for some time, it's a very long list. If you're not careful, you would keep thinking that, oh my goodness, there are so many things that are important. What is it that I need to focus on? You focus on the four key components and then you work down the final details. And when you have a group of employees who are trained all the way to be almost like you, from the top down to, to the lowest level, in other words, you are actually building a very deep bench with the same, sharing the same mindset, the same philosophy, buying into the same unified culture. So when the company is being designed and built that way, you will greatly improve your chances of business success and not have to just take a gamble at it. I I like that approach because we're seeing today all the sports teams are doing that. They're getting into cyber metrics. They know which pitcher to put in for which batter, uh, what play has the best chance of success early in the game, late in the game. And uh, if we use that in business, it's even more important because it's our business and this is what we're living on. Alan, I'd like to mention to our audience that in case they missed it at the beginning of the show, our guest today is Alan Young. That's Y-O-N-G. Alan Young. He is the author of the book, The Four Pillars of Business Success, and the word for, F-O-U-R, is spelled out. Alan, would you tell us where we can get the book, and is there a website where we can find out more information? Certainly, Bill. The, the book is available on Amazon and many other um, distributor and reseller. And if you want to check out our website, it's Four Pillar. Or businesssuccess.com, spell as F O U R, uh, pillars of businesssuccess.com. So basically the same as the title of the book with just .com. That is correct. That you make it easy for us. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and to our audience, if you're thinking of starting a business or your dad or your uncle, um, you're taking a chance. It's a big risk and it's a big step, of course, in life. But if you have a book like Alan's where it gives you some ground rules, where it may alert you, and even if you get one tip out of it, and of course, there's many, many, but even if one thing just stands out, if that saves you time, money, or the suffering through a big dip in business or loss of business, it's definitely worth it. Alan knows what he's talking about. You've heard it already as he mentioned some points to you. He wants to put the odds in your favor. And uh, when we bet 
on horses or throw dice or go to a baseball game. We all want the odds in our favor. Now, Alan, you mentioned in your book that uh, you find that companies often fail to meet their goals because of a lack of a good foundation. What kind of a foundation are you talking about? The foundation in business is very, very important. Just like the, the, the way you mentioned about the sports team this day, they don't take chances. They build a solid team. They don't just pick up anyone. They go out and scout for the best player. And the players are like your employees. Okay. Uh, and then they want to make sure that they have all the strategies. They know their competitors inside out. They will study the tab over and over again. Okay. How to exploit the competition. The only way you can do it is if you know what is it that you need to focus on. You need to know the strengths and weaknesses of your competition. And you know, all the things are absolutely critical to improve business success. Now, uh, Alan, you, you mentioned, and of course, that's a good point to know our competition. I think we're so busy with our own company, sometimes we fail to look at what's going on with others. Um, you say most businesses enter a market that's already served by others. Um, after looking at your book, and I walked in a store, just toothpastes alone, we could find 10 or 20 of them, and those are just the major ones. I'm sure if I looked a little harder, we could find tons on the Internet. How do we find this unique business? Because there are hamburger restaurants out there. There are pizzerias. There are stores that sell sporting equipment, uh, books, basically whatever. Somebody's out there with it. Does it have to be that most unique one, or is it just doing something better than what's being done? Um, that is actually a very, very good point, Bill. Um, people don't realize that in the real world, there actually it seldom happens that someone really come up with an idea that is so unique that no one even thought about it or would be able to replicate what you're doing and be able to compete with you and take your business away. In majority of the cases, you are getting involved in the business, whether it's a product or service, that someone is already quite well established, maybe extremely well established. If the potential is there for significant growth, and if you do everything right, you can be very profitable and continue to grow. Then that is not an issue that you know, um, that market is already crowded with competitors. What you need to do, and it's been done every now and then, that if you are able to position yourself to be significantly different than your competitors, then you will be successful. The way to do it is at a minimum, okay, this is the business I want to be in, and I know it's highly competitive. A lot of people are already in that business. Now, can I make a minimum commitment? And that minimum commitment is that I will be equal to, and then better than any competitors that's out there. How could that happen? It's it will be dependent on the four pillars and a lot of other things that you can add to it that are important. And being the best in class is the mindset. If you believe that you can do it and you're determined to do, to learn all that you can and understand what it takes and be able to convey that mindset, that culture throughout your employees from the top down, then it doesn't matter how competitive that market is. You just have to be better than the competitors. Or at a minimum, a, a commitment to be equal to. If not, my advice is, Go get a job. Continue to work for someone. Okay. <laughs> now, Alan, uh, we're, we want to know the four pillars of success. But before we get into that, we have to take a brief break. And at this point in the show, we like to remind our listeners that you're listening to The Secrets of Success. My name is Bill Horan. The show is produced at the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. 
Hi, I'm Danica Patrick and proud aunt. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing. But not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. One in six.